His check on stories we're following for you on Robin Hood Radio. In Sunday's Republican American, Ruth Epstein informed us that Connecticut's oldest resident passed away. Florence Carroll, who was the oldest Connecticut resident, passed away April 15th at the age of 113 at Noble Horizons in Salisbury. Carroll was born Florence Bernese in Millerton, New York on June 9th, 1907, the daughter of an Italian-born father and Irish-born mother. As a young adult, she was a professional cook in Lakeville. She married John Carroll. Carol in 1930. They had nine children. She's survived by two sons, a daughter, 11 grandchildren, 13 great-grandchildren, and three great-great-grandchildren. Our condolences to the family. After several years of wrangling over the fate of the fairgrounds in Great Barrington, town officials announced a local couple has made an offer to buy and redevelop the property and donate the other part to the town for public use. We talked about this last week on the Berkshire Edge on air. Town manager Mark Risky told the select board, Last Monday, that Shovel Enterprises, a real estate investment firm run by town residents Judd and Susan Shovel, possibly will develop the frontage of the 41-acre fairgrounds into housing and small retail. They also propose donating 15 to 20 acres of the eastern side near the Housatonic River to the town so it can link the Great Barrington Land Conservancy's north-south walking trail, have a picnic area, and possibly build the dog park and ice skating rink. They noted the Shovels also said they would clean up the deteriorating property and racetrack buildings. The property is assessed by the town at $1.1 million. The announcement comes after a decade of hand-wringing over the property, which has laid dormant for years after decades of horse racing and agricultural fairs. As to reopen, Massachusetts schools are reporting new highs in weekly cases. Districts reported a record high number of COVID-19 cases for the week ending Wednesday. The first full week under the state ordered elementary schools to return to in-person learning. 1,279 new cases were reported, including 1,095 among students and 184 among staff from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education in its weekly report. An estimated 650,000 students and 125,000 staff access school buildings in that period. The Village of Millerton property owners and businesses should be aware that a petition drive is being launched to build support for the creation of a wastewater disposal system for the heart of the Village of Millerton. Business operators and building owners are encouraged to read the petition and sign to show as a show of support for important initiatives like this. Copies of the petition can be signed at either Montage at 25 Main Street or Oblong Books at 26 Main Street. If you prefer, you can send a letter of support to the mayor and supervisor, but they're hoping to have a large majority of affected businesses and property owners sign that petition. Dutchess County Executive Mark Molinaro and City of Poughkeepsie Mayor Rob Rollison announced more than $1.1 million in funding is now available through COVID-19 Emergency Rent and Utility Relief Program for low- and moderate-income households adversely affected by the pandemic. Although there's a temporary moratorium on evictions, payment for past-due rents will be due when the moratorium is lifted, and many households will have difficulty paying paying past due rent quickly enough to avoid eviction. Solarize Ancrum has sent out some information. If you are interested in solar, the town of Ancrum has partnered with Solar Energy to bring community solar options to Ancrum. You need to register by June 1st to claim your spot. Register online at app.solstice.us slash register. Enter the referral code Ancrum. You can call the enrollment team at 866 866- 8261997 learn more at solstice.us/ankrum Connecticut regulators have rejected the rate stability agreement between United Illuminating and the state they rejected that agreement Friday, State Attorney General William Tong responded to the draft decision by the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority that rejected the agreement with United Illuminating. Quote, Pura got this wrong and I strongly urge them to reconsider. I do not understand why they rejected a settlement that does so much to help Connecticut families squeeze by the cost of electricity. Their plan will provide a marginal immediate savings to ratepayers, but at the expense of millions of dollars in new charges to Connecticut families who simply cannot afford to pay more down the road. This just doesn't make good sense to me, especially when United Illuminating was willing to contribute their own money to avoid the problem. Connecticut consumers pay far too much just to keep their lights on. We all need the rate stability that this deal would have provided. This is just a draft decision. I'm hopeful that with further analysis and deeper understanding, Pura will change course, end quote. That from Attorney General Tong.
The first two weeks of April saw the number of active COVID-19 cases in Dutchess County decrease by nearly 24 percent and the number of residents vaccinated increased by more than 31 percent. However, the number of residents hospitalized has been higher than in March and eight more residents have succumbed to the illness. Meanwhile, the outbreak on Marist College campus has seen nearly 300 new cases since March 27th, though the school's infection rate and number of active cases has now declined to the point where it has resumed some campus activities. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo signed legislation on Friday requiring broadband providers to offer $15 per month high-speed internet access to low-income households. It's the first law of its kind in the nation. The bill requires all internet providers to offer high-speed broadband at $15 a month, including all equipment and fees to low-income households and individuals who qualify for government assistance. Great Barrington Police have scheduled two Zoom conversations inviting the local Asian community to join in the conversation. The department is hoping to gain insight into the challenges of this community locally and how they can be better served. The Zoom conversations will take place on Wednesday, April 21st at 11 a.m. and Wednesday, April 28th at 4 p.m. All participants are required to register. Send an email to Kara Becker. C. Becker at town of gb.org with your name and email address. Space is limited. Massachusetts employers added 12,800 jobs in March, and the state's jobless rate dropped to 6.8% from a revised 7% in February. So meetings coming up in our area. The Salisbury Board of Assessment Appeals will have site inspections coming up today in between 10 and 1. In Sharon, the Board of Education has their meeting set for 6 p.m. tonight. In Copec, you can learn the basics of estate planning at a free Zoom workshop presented by the Roll of Jansen Community Library, Hudson Area Library, Claverick Free Library, and Philmont Public Library. That happens tonight at 6 p.m. For information on Rojan's hours and events, 518-325-4101, or go to rojanlibrary.org, or their Facebook page for more information on how to sign up. The Village of Millerton has a regular meeting at 6 p.m. tonight, a public hearing for local law amendment. It will be on Facebook Live. The Town of Dover Planning Board has their regular meeting tonight at Duncan Hill Road. Planning and Zoning Commission in Salisbury meets tonight at 6.30. In Kent, Park and Recreation regular meeting is tonight at 7 p.m. A public hearing on budgets will be immediately followed by a special Board of Selectments meeting to approve budgets and set the mill rate tonight, 7.30 to 8.30 at Salisbury Town Hall. More information at the Salisbury website. In Hillsdale, New York, a special town board meeting happens tomorrow at 6 p.m. to open bids for park maintenance. There is a Zoom ID that you can get from their website. The Town of Sheffield Select Board meets tomorrow at 7 p.m. Cornwall Board of Selectmen have a Zoom meeting tomorrow at 7.30. Paceline Junior Cycling, a junior cycling team for youth between the ages of 8 and 18, has an informational meeting coming up on Wednesday at 5.30 at Footfield Pavilion in West Cornwall. More information at PacelineJuniorCycling.com. Salisbury Fording Housing Commission has a meeting on Wednesday, 5.30 till 6.30. Revolutional Sage Library in Sheffield hosting a virtual discussion on tax reform via Zoom with Strumo on Thursday at 7 p.m. Pre-registration is required. BushnellSageLibrary.org. The Sheffield Housing Commission has a meeting on Thursday at 7 p.m. Town of Northeast Zoning Board of Appeals meeting will be held in the annex of the Northeast Millerton Library in Millerton, New York on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Coinciding with its grand opening night for the Drive-In Movie Theater's new season, the Amenia Four Brothers Drive-In will be hosting the 5th Annual Fireman's Fundraiser for the community on Friday evening. Running from 6.30 to 11.30, area residents invited to come out for an evening of fun and help support their local fire volunteers who do much to keep everybody who lives and works in our local community safe. All proceeds from ticket sales for this event go to the Amenia Fire Company. For more information and to purchase tickets, Four Brothers Drive-In website is at play eatdrink.com. Dover Cleanup Day is being held on Saturday, April 24th. You'll meet at 8 o'clock in the morning at Boyce Park Pavilion. More information at 845-832-9168. 
Armenia Town Cleanup Day will be held this weekend as well. Saturday, April 24th from 9 to noon, volunteers can meet at Fountain Square, m and Bank, at the intersection of Route 343 and 22, or at Borden Park at the intersection of Main Street and Furnace Bank Road in Wasaic, where bags will be available. To arrange for pickup of filled litter bags, contact Vicki at 845-489-7826 or Damien at 845-321-4226. DM Hunt Library has a Zoom event, Preserving the Harvest with a Traditional Way, Lacto-Free Fermentation with Adama Farm and Carly Sugar. It's on Sunday at 2 o'clock at Hunt Library. You can register at huntlibrary.org or on their Facebook page. Scott Heth, former head of Audubon Center in Sharon and a local jazz musician, returns to the Tri-State region for a fundraising concert to support the role of Jansen Community Library at Role of Jansen Park in Hillsdale on Sunday at 3 p.m. Heth will perform on keyboard with Chris Jensen on saxophone, Jay Bradley on percussion, Cushion at an afternoon of American Songbook Jazz. Bring your own lawn chair, mass, and social distancing required. For more information, 518-325-4101 or rojanlibrary.org. You'll also find them on Facebook. Our business brief is underwritten by Morgans at the Interlake and interlakeandin.com. You'll find them on Facebook and Instagram. And by Salisbury Bank, salisburybank.com. And also by Valley Insurance, 413-243-0347, valleyinsurance.com. The Dow Jones Industrial Average will start off the day at 34,200.67, the NASDAQ at 14,052.34, and the S&P 500 at 4,185.47. We'll take a look at the tri-state forecast. That'll come your way in just a few moments. <music> 